little piece of lead stopped the brilliant career of one of the finest men who ever lived. I'm sorry I never knew your father, sir. He was a great lawyer, Henrix. Every racketeer in the country feared him. That's why they got him. But you're carrying on, sir. Oh, after a fashion, but... I'd give anything in the world if I could match that bullet. Would you be wanting the car, sir? Yes. You wouldn't keep affidavits in here, Steve. Of course not. Lawyers got brains, too. You think you can make it, kid? Say, this is as easy as a dime bank. Nothing to it. Quit patting yourself on the back. Sorry to interrupt, boys. The shadow. Be right over. Another one of those calls. Come on, Kelly. Hey, what's your game, mister? Well, it's uh, a form of solitaire. Boys, keep him up. Well, if it ain't Red Hogan and his little playmate, Stevie. Get going. Beat it. Yes, sir. Things don't look right in there. Better take him down. I'll join you later. Okay. Come on, get him up. Well, what's this? Hello. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm Mr. Randall. I must thank you for coming to my rescue. Say, did you just come in? No, I was in my office. To be truthful, I locked myself in when I heard them working on the safe. Hmm. Guess it's uh, better to be careful, eh? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm glad you're here, Mr. Randall. I have a few questions I want to ask. Oh, just routine stuff, you know. I'm at your service. Uh, we might be more comfortable in my private office. Come in. Yeah. Sit down, Inspector. Captain. Captain Breen. Oh, I see. Did you phone headquarters? Yes. Those papers in the safe must be pretty valuable, aren't they? To me, yes. Yeah. I see. Don't shoot, sir. Don't shoot. This place is full of burglars. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you, Captain. That nervous individual happens to be on my side. Oh, I see. M may I relax, sir? Yes, all right. Oh, Henrichs, uh, take those papers to my apartment. You know the ones I want. Oh, yes, sir. 
And if you have any difficulty, remember you're working for Chester Randall. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Here's your phone, Mr. Randall. Yes, thanks. <laughs> Uh, hello? Yes, this is, uh, Chester Randall. I'm calling for Mr. Caleb Delthorne. Mr. Delthorne wants me to come to his home. What, at this time of night? Sorry about the hour, Mr. Randall. But before Mr. Delthorne's lawyer left for Europe, he insisted that we call you, in case of emergency. Well, wouldn't tomorrow do? Oh, I see. Yes. Well, uh, what's the address? Uh, have you got a pencil, Captain? Thank you. Yes? Fine. Yes, thank you. I'll be over as soon as possible. Yes. Goodbye. What's up? I don't know. Well, thanks again, Captain. If you need me for anything later, I'm at your service. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, uh, I think I'd better go along with you. Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary. You don't seem to know what they want with you, and perhaps... Yes, I think I'd better go along. All right, if you think it's best. Uh, pardon me, I'll get my briefcase. Surely. Captain? Well, yes. Uh, would you mind locking the safe? No, no. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Randall? I'm Mr. Randall. Mr. Delton is waiting, sir. Thank you. Anything I can do? Oh, no, sir. It's really not that serious. Thanks for your kindness, Captain. Not at all. Glad to have been of service, Mr. Randall. See, I've been out in the sticks for a long time, and we don't get to meet very many big-time lawyers. I was wondering why you hadn't recognized me. Good night. Good night. Headquarters. At your service, Mr. Delphin. Sit down, please. Thank you. That's all, well. I let Mr. Randall out. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. I thought there might be a possibility that uh, you were in your office. I'm glad I was, Mr. Delphine. I want to be of assistance, but uh, this is rather unusual. Unusual? That's it. That's why I need a lawyer. This is my last will. Read it. Would you call that uh, dangerous? Yes, under certain circumstances, I would. I guess you think I'm eccentric. Maybe I am. But I wanted one member of my family, the eldest, to be.
to be head of the Deltons. When you have a new will written, uh, I suppose it's my advice you want. Yes, yes. It would be better to specifically name your heirs in the amount that goes to each instead of merely stating, to my eldest surviving heir, I leave half of my estate. That's what I want to do, Mr. Ray. Fine. Well, then if you'll stop into the office about 10 in the morning, we can... That may be too late. Oh, I don't understand. Uh, I've never been a man to let my imagination get the better of me, but uh, I have a feeling that my life is in jeopardy. Who knows the contents of that will? To my knowledge, you know, nobody. With the exception of my niece and nephews. I, uh, I told them about it a few days ago. But I don't think that uh, any one of them would deliberately plan to get me out of the way. I wish you'd make a new will for me. Right now. Well, I'd be glad to, Mr. Delfer, if that'll make you feel any better. Have we some paper? Yes, certainly. Who is Winstead Comstock? Uh, he's my nephew. He's about 35. 35. The eldest of the lot. And Humphrey Comstock? Humphrey is uh, his younger brother. Now, uh, Marcia and Jasper Delphin, are they your children? No, no, I've never had any children. They were my brothers. He and my sister were killed in an accident five years ago. Oh, I'll close it for you. So many weird things have happened the last few days. Where do your niece and nephews live? Uh, here, with me. Humphrey's the only one who's home. I want a clause written that Marcia is to be completely disinherited if she marries Warren Ray. Ah. Heard a shot, Mr. Humphrey. He's dead, Wellington. Stand back. I've got you covered. Huh? Henrik, what are you doing here? What happened, sir? Mr. Delphin's been shot. You do it, sir? Well, no, certainly not. Well, let's get back before you become involved, sir. That's precisely what I intend to do. Perhaps it'd be a good idea to pick up Mr. Randall's briefcase. But who could have killed him? I don't know, sir. I left him in here with Mr. Randall alone. Your uncle sent for him. Did you find any trace of the murderer? No, I didn't. You're Humphrey Comstock. Your uncle said you were at home. Yes. I'm somewhat dazed by the suddenness of this. It might be a good idea, sir, to phone the police. Yes, of course. Get me police headquarters. You're not going. Oh, no. Naturally, the police will want to question you. Yes, of course. Hello, police headquarters? This is Humphrey Comstock speaking. Caleb Delphin was just murdered. What's the matter with you tonight, Marcia? You've been so quiet and preoccupied all evening. I don't exactly know, Warren. I... I suppose after we're married, we live scrappily ever after. I'll be all right tomorrow. Don't come in. Good night. Good night. Why don't you call today and get yourself some pretty sleep, Wellington? I, I have some very bad news for you, Miss Martin. What is it? Your uncle, Miss. I wouldn't advise you going in.
Take it easy, Marcia. Well, he's dead. I don't understand. He was feeling all right after dinner when I left him. Uncle Caleb was murdered. This is Mr. Ramble. He was here with Uncle when they... Then you can tell us about... There isn't much to tell. We were seated at the desk and a bullet came through that window. Maybe. That's the police, Wellington. That's the men. Yes, sir. You started to say something. Oh, oh, nothing. This way, gentlemen. I think you'd better hold that man, officer. He seemed very anxious to get away. I think I can explain that. What are you doing in this house? Your uncle sent for me. That's right. I was in the office when Mr. Randall got the phone call. As a matter of fact, I drove out here with him. Pardon me, Mr. Humphrey, but I happen to know your uncle was expecting him. Where'd the shot come from? Uh, through that window, Captain. All right, Kelly. Take Graham and search the grounds. Sure. Where's the telephone? Hello. Is this the coroner? This is Breen talking. I'm up at the Delphine. Yeah, Mr. Delphine. Right away. Goodbye. I'm sorry, old man. Forget it, please. Hiya, Breen. After this, don't drive so fast. We couldn't keep up with you. Someday I'm going to be fortunate enough to lose you, news hound. So Delphine was plugged, huh? That's just what we needed. A nice murder. Yeah, well, don't touch the body, understand? I think we'd better go to another room. Who done the job? Don't know yet. Stick around, Davis. See if these high binders don't get away with anything. Okay, Captain. Grab some pictures. I'll wake up the city editor. Hmm. Taking a little stroll? Oh, why, yes, sir. It's a nice night for it, isn't it? Yeah. Come on, take a walk with us. Oh, oh I can't do that. I, I'm going in there. I'm Winston Comstock, you know. Well, now, isn't that a funny coincidence? Yes. <laughs> That's just the way we're going. Oh, really? Yeah, come on. Here, don't come, do that. Come on. I don't know who done it. It's a mystery, I tell you. Now, what's the birdie? We found him outside. Uh, what's happened to my uncle? Hold the wire. Well, in case you don't know it, your uncle's dead. Dead? Oh, he was quite all right when I left here. <laughs> Where's Breen? In the other room. Breen? Uh, who's Breen? Oh, you'll find out soon enough. Come on. They'd have a motive, particularly the Elvis. Winston! We found him roaming around outside. I'm sure there's been some mistake, officer. Marsha, who are all these men? Please explain where you've been. Hmm? I said, where have you been? Oh, out walking, what? Where's your hat? I presume you wear one. Oh, yes, I... I left it at the cinema, the, uh, the palace cinema. Oh. The show has been over for two hours. Where have you been since then? I don't remember. Hmm? Walking around. You didn't stop anywhere where we could check up on your story. No. Of course you're aware of the contents of your late uncle's will. No. That's a lie, Winstead. Why, well, he told us about it only a few days ago. See here, young man, are you arguing with me? Pardon. Do you realize that... I beg your pardon. Hmm? You seem to have all the matches. May I have a light? No. Uh, no, of course not. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, take him in, Kelly. Please. Hmm? Come on. You mean to say that you're going to take me to what you're called your who's gow? Or... Without what I would call my mouthpiece? You got it, brother. I got what? My hat? Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Hello. Hello. Give me a rewrite, man, quick. What? Have I got a story? Well, what do you think I got? The same fight as Nance? Hurry up and get me somebody, quick. Hurry up. Well, 
Well, you cleaned me in a half hour. Here you are, Brockett. Put it among your souvenirs. If I remember correctly, you owe me ten grand. Oh, well, maybe my luck will change. Well, one way or another, I want your account straightened out by tomorrow night. By tomorrow night, you'll be owing me money. Well, Adam, you've dealt her another grand. Yes, sure. Gordon's waiting for you in the office. Gimme, give gimme. Give Keep your shirt on. Ah, oh, it's too late for that. Ross has got it. Take it easy, kid. What's on your mind? I just talked with Red and Steve. It's about time they showed up. Where are they? In the tank. The cops picked them up at Randall's office. What happened? The shadow stepped in. I'd just like to know who he is. Mr. Jasper came home about five minutes ago, Miss. He wanted to know. Thank you, Wellington. Winstead is innocent. I guess we better phone the police. We can't do that, Humphrey. No? What do you suggest? This Mr. Bross is a very popular man, sir. And he's even wanted in China. Yes. The clever Chester Randall will never get him. These affidavits won't help much. Bross, it seems to have an alibi for every occasion. Hello? Who? Mr. Randall? Well... Hello? Yes, this is Chester Randall. Oh, hello! Hello. Oh, what's the trouble? You can't tell me over the telephone? Well, that's all right. Yes, I'll be right over. Goodbye. I gave her my telephone number. She said she'd keep it confidential. I sincerely hope she does, sir. Maybe I'd better come with you. Well, what's the matter? You afraid I'll invite Breen to see you or something? Oh, no, sir. I don't think you'd do that. And thanks for your faith in me, Henry. And by the way, I've got a job for you. Yes, sir. Go to the Palace Theater and get the head usher. See if he found any hats there last night. And... Here, go to this place, Barney's Cafe. Find out if they know a Winstead Comstock. And in the meantime, if you want me, I'll yes, be... I know, Miss Delta. That's right. I hope you didn't mind my calling you. Oh, not at all. It was a pleasure to hear from you. I hope you'll telephone again. I thought you would help. Otherwise, I wouldn't have phoned you. Don't worry, please. Everything's going to be all right. Hello, Randall. Oh, hello, Humphrey. I still think we better call the police. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Hello, is Captain Breen there? Oh, at home catching up with some rest. I see. This is Chester Randall speaking. Is that you, Kelly? Could you give me the caliber of the gun that killed Mr. Delton? Yes. I see. Thank you. Goodbye. Well? Uh, this is not the gun that killed your uncle. I'll answer it. Shall I put this away for you? Put it in the drawer of the desk. The desk? In the library. In the park. Mr. Farrington, Miss. Marcia, why didn't you call me? I'm sorry, Warren, but there was nothing you could do, really. Mr. Randall, Mr. Warren Barringer. How do you do? So, you're Warren. Pardon me. May I suggest that I fix a little breakfast? Won't you join us? Uh, yes, gladly.
says the boss was there. See, I thought Mr. Randall was out of town. He is. There's something screwy going on here. Well, it won't take long to find out what it is. Give me police headquarters. Gee, this is exciting. Maybe the guy's a crook or something. May I talk to Captain Green, please? I'll take you, Kelly. Hello? Captain Green speaking. Uh, I'm Miss Hughes, Mr. Randall's secretary. I read in the paper that he was supposed to be in town last night. But that isn't so, Captain. He's on a vacation. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll take care of that, Miss Hughes. Thanks very much for tipping me off. Goodbye. Mom's talk was in both places, like you thought, sir. There you, sir. Thought I'd find you here. Glad you dropped in, Captain. Yeah. You and that pelican face stooge of yours are pretty slick. But you can't get away with whatever you're trying to do. Huh. Captain, I don't know what you're talking about. Your secretary called me. Oh, did she? Yeah. And she told me that Chester Randall is not in town. Well, there must be some mistake. I'll say there is. So you're a phony. Certainly you can prove who you are. Yes, I think I can. Uh, Captain, would you mind phoning my office? The number is Madison 6432. Ask for Ms. Hughes, my secretary. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Is that you, Miss Hughes? I'll speak with her. Hold the wire. Thank you. <clears throat> hello? Uh, hello, Miss Hughes. Uh, this is Chester Randall. Oh, no, it's me, all right. It's nice to hear your voice, too. No, I'm sort of hiding out in town. I thought perhaps I could get a better rest here than at one of those resorts. <laughs> But I'm still on my vacation. Yes, uh, no, I'll be in the office in a day or two. Oh, well, if the mayor telephones again, tell him I'll get in touch with him the first of the week, please. Now, hold the wire a minute. Uh, would you like to speak with her again? Uh, no. No, that's all right, Miss Hughes. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Oh, and remember, I'm still on my vacation. Yes, goodbye. I'm sorry, Mr. Randall. Why, nothing to it, Captain. I'm glad to know that you have my interest at heart. Thank you. Uh, oh, by the way, Henrik's checked on Winstead and found out that he was at the Palace Theater last night and then, uh, then went to Barney's, where he remained until shortly uh, before he was picked up here in the ground. Hmm. I'll phone Barney right away. If that's true, the murder of Delphine is still at large. Yes. Uh, Captain, don't you think it's a good idea to see Barney personally? Naturally, you want an affidavit. Yes, that's right. I'll go with you. All right. Glad to have you. Do you mind if Henrik remains here? I'm expecting an important phone call, and I'd like him to take it. No, no, not at all. See you later. Henrik, uh, you'll take care of that for me, won't you? Yes, sir, certainly, sir. Mm. I'm later, but I'm not as proficient in the art of connecting phones as I might be. Well, you can practice in your spare time. Thank you, sir. Have you brought Randall's papers? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good. We'll return them. You mean go back in his office, sir? Yes, sir. Certainly, sir. I guess my secretary didn't discover I was here. Evidently not, sir. Fill it up, Hendricks. Yes, Miss Hughes, I've been sort of uh, hiding out in town. 
I thought I could get a better rest here than at one of those resorts, you know. Pardon me, uh, sir. Don't you think it would be safer if you spoke to Miss Hughes some other place? Well, uh... Oh, what's this? What's what, sir? Memorandum. Look at that second notation, sir. Ross wants him to call. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, probably thinks he can buy Mr. Randall off, sir. It might be a good idea to drop in and visit Brossett. Briggs, I think it would be better if you waited for me. Oh, yes, sir. Certainly, sir. Can I do something for you? Oh, yes. I'd like to see Mr. Brossett. I think he's in his office. This way, please. Thanks. Hi, sir. Come in. He wants to see you. Is it okay? Yeah. Mr. Brossett. Yeah? I'm Mr. Harris. Mr. Randall suggested I pay you a visit. Oh, he did, huh? Yes. I've joined his staff of lawyers. Oh. Bill Gordon, Mr. Harris. How are you, Mr. Gordon? Fine. Sit down. Thank you. What's on your mind? Nothing. I thought perhaps you had something on yours. Chester Randall is still on his vacation. I figured I could take care of what you wanted. My business is with Randall. I can't use you, Harris. Well, I'll have to wire the boss. Our office was broken into. No. I just said it was. And peculiarly enough, the situation was saved by, I think the underworld calls him the shadow. That's yeah, interesting. Have a drink, Mr. Harris. No, thanks. But I'll have a cigarette if you don't mind. Oh. How you doing, kid? Well, I guess you better let me have another grand or two. That's your guess. I'll check with the boss. I hear the shadow's been making it pretty tough for some of the boys. You evidently get first-hand information. Yeah? Jasper Delton wants some more chips on the cup. Yeah, I wonder if that fellow knows he's playing for keeps. I've gone the limit with him, and I want the dough he owes me paid tonight. Yeah. I'll tell him that. Rossett has his own way of getting what's coming to him. <laughs> well, business is business. Yeah. I see you gentlemen are engaged. I shan't detain you any longer. Thanks for letting me in. And you're going to settle tonight. Well, you might give me a chance to get even. If you know what's good for you, you better get even with Rossett. You're Jasper Delphin, aren't you? Yes. I'm a friend of your sister's. I'm on my way to visit her now. Why not join me? Well, I might as well. There's nothing I can do around here but give it. Let's go. To the Delphins, Henry. What, sir? I said to the Delphins. Oh, yes, sir. Certainly, sir. You know, I was with your uncle when he was killed. Oh, so you're Randall? Yes. I wouldn't have recognized you from my sister's description. No? She said you were handsome, with a charming personality, and uh, most interesting. <laughs> well, that's encouraging. I suppose since Winston's been free, the police have practically moved in on you. Yes, indeed. The house has been infested with them all day. Have they any clues? No, but they're under the impression that one of us murdered Uncle Caleb. Yes, I thought so too for a while. The motive for the crime points so obviously in that direction, though, that I'm afraid someone's taking advantage of it. Have you any suspicions? No, not exactly. 
Tell me, do you know if your uncle ever received threatening letters from a racketeer or gambler? No. I know about your activity in that field. I'm afraid Ross is going to force your hand. I'll get it straightened out just as soon as I see Winston. Mm -hmm. I see you're still on the job, Captain. Yes. Where's Winston? I haven't seen him for about half an hour. He's in the library, sir. Winston. What are you doing there? Where have you been? Hmm? Come on. Get a side angle. We've got a swell idea for a feature story. It's called The House of Murder. And all the heirs get killed the same place as the uncle. No, now. You didn't tell me that. Of course I didn't. If I had, you wouldn't have posed. Come on, handsome. It's your turn. Sit down. Will you get out of here? Well, how do you like that? Here's a guy that wants his picture in the paper. Yes, get out of here. Well, come on, let's throw them out. Maybe we better get out. These guys are half cracked. Winston. Mm-hmm. I've got to have eleven thousand dollars. Eleven thousand? Hmm. Fancy that. Where are you going to get it? Why? I thought you'd loan it to me. You thought I? Well, you have another thing coming, young man. Been gambling again, huh? Now, please don't lecture. What I need is that money. Let's take a look around first, Shorty. Right. You're not going to get it from me. I've got to have it tonight. My dear Jasper, you have my utmost sympathy. Is that any good to you? You're pretty sure of yourself since the police let you go. Why shouldn't I be? You know, Winstead, there's such a thing as hiring a man to do a killing. Are you accusing me of something that we all know that you are? The trouble is that we haven't had a fingerprint or a clue of any kind. Ditch blood, Chuck. Jasper! Winston's dead. Well, at least we know who killed this one. I hope. Get him, Kelly. But I didn't do it. Well, what are you doing with that gun? Picking your teeth? Oh, I, I thought I could force Winston to do something for me. P -p -p Put your hands up, please. please. Walk a little faster, gentlemen, if you don't mind. I was afraid this would happen. Warren Barringer, where have you been? Out in the garden, having a smoke. Get your alibi already, huh? Pardon me, sir. What Mr. Barringer said is the truth. As a matter of fact, a few moments ago, I overheard Winstead giving Jasper a lecture about gambling. They were having it hot and heavy. Warren. May I see that gun, Captain? All the cartridges have been fired. May I interest you to know that we saw this gun this morning. Miss Delton saw it, too. One of the cartridges had been fired then. You can make a paraffin test and see if it's been fired in the last two hours. What in the world are you doing, Henry? I caught them running from the house, sir. It's a little trick I learned when I worked for the telephone company, sir. 
They may be the men you want, Captain. I found this in the car, sir. Risk them, Kelly. They're unarmed. Come on, Jester. You'll have to come along. My brother is not a murderer. I think Captain Breen will find that out for himself. In the meantime, your brother will be in a safe place. And please don't worry. I don't want to see Jasper punished if he's innocent. But don't forget, he's gained the bulk of an $8 million estate through Winstead's death. That's a lot of money. All right, take him in, Kelly. Come on, Jasper. This document is more valuable than ever. Uncle Caleb's will? Yes. Would you please keep it in a very, very safe place? Marcia, I don't understand. What has changed you so completely in the last few days? It seems only natural in the circumstances, doesn't it? Yes, I know. But your whole attitude toward me is different. Probably your imagination is working overtime. Possibly. What is that man doing in the hall? Oh, he's from the telephone company. Excuse me. Having a little trouble? A little. I had a bad connection here. Yeah? Somebody yanked this cord out and stuck it back in place with chewing gum. Why, yes. I remember someone calling and telling me to hold the line. But then we were disconnected. Well, that's all I wanted to know, Miss Hughes. And thank you. Thank you very much. Then he isn't Randall. I'm positive that he isn't. I'll send that bird on a vacation. Party of the first part, party of the second part. Now, let's see. Good morning, Henry. Are you taking up law? Uh, not exactly, sir. I was just looking up the penalty for one man impersonating another. Mm, good old Hendricks. I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. Pardon me, sir. You don't mind my saying so, but you have other work to do. Yes, I know, but there's something about this Delphin case that fascinates me. She's very charming, sir. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he had something to do with the murders, too. Maybe it's a good idea my imagination worked overtime. I only knew where I could get a hold of him. Why, do you know? I'm sorry, but I... Can't help you get hold of him. I'm so glad that you have my interest at heart, Captain. I guess you can't talk, eh, Chuck? I see. They get Bill, too? Well, I'll try and spring him. Shadow get him? Chuck didn't say. They're both in with murder charges against him. Oh, itchy trigger fingers, eh? You better go see what you can do. And tell those two mugs that Burke Webster's my mouthpiece, not them. They are to keep their mouths shut. OK, brother. I've got to talk to you. Well, hello there. Get inside, quick. Something wrong? The police are looking for you. Why? They found out that you're not Chester Randall. I guess it's dark enough to venture out, Hendricks. But you promised Miss Delphin you'd remain here, sir. Yes, I know. I wonder if you'd mind my talking to you, not as a servant, but just man to man. Oh, not at all. Sit down. Well, I suggest that you stay undercover until this Randall situation cools down a bit. 
and then get out of town. No, Henry. I'm going to carry on, as you so aptly put it. But you're wanted by the police. Now you have both sides against you. You evidently forget that none of the gang leaders know who I am. How long do you think you can keep your identity a secret? I never cross a bridge before I come to it. Well, it's about time you started. You want to get blotted. You've met your life against the chance of getting a man who killed your father. But, well, you're only defeating your own purpose. Now, don't think I don't appreciate your great loyalty and interest. You still intend going out, sir? I do. Very well. I'll get your hat, sir. Thank you. And where do you think you're going? With you, sir. Good old Henry. You'd better let me do this alone, Henry. I'm sorry, sir. I have a little carrying on to do, too. Oh, that's fine, old boy. But drive the car around to the alley behind Brossett's office. Be careful and remember what I told you. Yes, sir. Certainly, sir. I was in the neighborhood and thought I'd drop in. See the publicity your boss got? Yeah. Have they caught the fellow that's impersonating him? No. It's a funny setup, isn't it? Yeah. coming back. Tomorrow, I guess. You play golf, Brossett? No, not much. I talked with Randall on the long distance telephone. I don't think you'll have much difficulty getting him to listen to reason. Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it? I'll talk to Randall about that. Okay. Hi. Oh, hello, Gordon. Hello. I've got a little business with Brossett. I hope you don't mind. I see. Putting me out again, huh? Well, not exactly. <laughs> okay, see you later. So long. So long. So long. Well, what'd they say for themselves? Webster talked to them. They claim they didn't do the killing. Bert will bail them out tomorrow. But I learned a couple of very interesting things. Yeah? Yeah. The shadow had nothing to do with it. Well, there's something anyway. What else? Chuck told Webster about old man Delcarn's will. It seems Jasper's in line for an eight million dollar cut. Yeah, I just read about it. I thought maybe we could muscle in on it somehow. Without that will, I guess the estate will be divided equally, huh? Yeah, I guess so. The answer is more simple than I expected. All we've got to do is to get that little piece of paper. My friend Jasper will pay and pay plenty. The will's probably at the house. But if you hurry, you won't have any trouble. Gordon tells me Breen and Kelly are at the station house right now, questioning Jasper. 
Anything happening, Henrik? I say, Henrik, what's news? What's news, sir? Why, Bross has sent a couple of men to get Mr. Delton's will. He figures he can make Jasper divide his share of the estate somehow. Oh, he does, huh? Well, what are you going to do, sir? I'm going to the Delton. Oh, you can't do that, sir. Police will. Uh, but I'm not going there as the man the police want. We want Del Thurn's will. All right, over there, Copper. What's the meaning of this? Hand over the old man's will. What? I haven't it. Don't tell me, lady, we know different. It's upstairs. I'll get it. That's what I call a smart girl. Say, this was easier than I thought. Let's get going. Stay where you are, gentlemen. Drop that gun. Leave that paper in this house. And he waited for the police and then disappeared. What gets me is how the shadow knew what we had in mind. Say, what about that guy, Harris? Yeah. He left here before we did any talking. Hey, take a look at this. There must be some connection between that guy, Harris, and the shadow. You were quite right, Warren, when you said I'd changed. I didn't realize it myself. But I do want to be fair with you. Why, Marcy, you talk as though it's all off between us. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Oh. I'm sorry. So am I. So you aren't going for this mysterious tall, dark, and handsome, are you? To be honest? I don't know. Well, I guess there's no use in the hang around here. There's no need for you to hurry. Goodbye, Marcia. And good luck. You'll need it. Goodbye, Warren. Thanks. I couldn't help overhearing. It's a peculiar thing, Wellington. My competition happens to be a man of mystery. Most mysteries are solved, sir. Thanks. Good night. Good night, sir. Well, anyway, we definitely know Bross is the first-class blackmailer, sir. I feel certain we can get more on him than that, Henry. Well, here's the alley, sir. Do you think we should return there? I know what I'm going to do. How about you? Maybe he'll come back. He wouldn't have the nerve. I know. There's a car. It looks like Harris. We'll give him a chance to get set. Turn out the lights. Ark, sir. Guess they went out. Yeah, well, they might come back. Come in, Gordon. Hi 
I thought that that guy Harris was on the level. He had me fooled, too. It's a good thing for us that I checked up on him. Oh, Sergeant? Hello. Rasa talking. Send the squad over here right away. I think we can pick up a man you'd be very interested in getting. Have the boys drive in the alley in back of my place. I'll meet them there. Anything wrong, sir? We're calling it a day, Henry. the alley around the corner. Wait a minute. Follow that car. Put the car away, Henry. Oh, hello, Wellington. I'm here to kill you. Well, I rather expected you to come here, but hardly to kill me. Open it. If you even hint that I'm here, I'll let you have it. Hello. Hello, Brassett. I'm surprised to see you. I thought you would be. The Shadow, eh? <laughs> oh, that, I wouldn't move if I were you, Mr. Shadow. I've got you covered, Welling. What? What? Keep him covered, Hendricks. Yes. So, I was mad, I guess. I hoped to kill you. I wanted my son to get some of the Delphin money. Your son? Yes. Warren Barringer. My son. Then I'm forgiven, Mr. Randall? There's nothing to forgive. I accomplished more by taking a vacation than I ever could have in the office. And that's most generous of you. And thank you, Mr. Cranston, for upholding the name of Chester Randall. Good day. Well, I guess we'd better shove off, too. Oh, don't rush away. There's no hurry. You haven't forgotten you're coming to the house for dinner, have you? No. Uh, dinner at 8 o'clock? You could come earlier. Thanks, I will. Goodbye. So long. I found this bullet in the wall, sir. It must be from Brossett's gun. Thought you might be interested. Thanks. Where are you going, Henry? I thought I'd throw it away, sir. I wouldn't do that if I were you. There may come a time when we can use the shadow again. Mm -hmm.